When you think about air pollution, you immediately think of the air outside. But what we breathe inside, the places we work may be getting just as bad. I'm Dale Shornack. What are the symptoms of sick building syndrome? Find out tonight on Nightcast. Four out of ten drivers in Arizona don't carry insurance, even though it's the law. How can we improve that number? Well, some people think no-fault insurance is the answer. I'm Clarence Scott. What is no-fault insurance? We'll focus on that Monday, live at 5. Little Tommy Tenuta is getting another liver transplant in about two hours. He was put back on the donor list just today after doctors in Chicago revealed his new liver was failing. We'll explain what caused the problem on Nightcast. Good evening, I'm Karen Carnes. Also at 10, why should you be concerned about air pollution inside of the buildings where you work? And this is Earth Day, Arizona, back in 1970. Do you remember it? Not a lot of people do. We'll talk about Earth Day and a lot more tonight on Nightcast. Hope you can join us at 10 o'clock. Hi everybody, Dave Muncy. Weather for the Earth Day weekend on Nightcast. Has Earth Day really had an effect on our environment? The story tonight at 10. Next on Nightcast, we have an update on Tommy Tenuta. The little Phoenix boy is getting ready for another liver transplant operation right now. We'll have the details. Also tonight, environmentalists beef up their protests against a plan, uh, plan toxic waste dump in Mobile, Arizona. Do you remember that horrible garbage barge without a home? Earth Day advocates don't ever want to see that again. We'll look at 20 years of Earth Day ahead News on Center Nightcast. Nightcast is also heard in Spanish on KVVA, 860 AM. It's 10 o'clock on Channel 10. And this is New Center 10 Nightcats. You may want to think of this little boy tonight before you go to sleep. Tommy Tenuta has a rough night ahead of him. Good evening, I'm Dave Patterson. And I'm Karen Carnes. Thank you for joining us tonight. The nine-month-old Phoenix boy is scheduled for liver transplant surgery one hour from now. Doctors in Chicago feel Tommy needs this transplant in order to stay alive. One month ago, Tommy made history as the fifth child to receive part of a family member's liver, but he developed some complications. Now, I'm sure that you can understand this is not the time to intrude on Tommy's parents, but we will keep you up to date by talking to the people at the University of Chicago. We have a breaking story to tell you about tonight. Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies found the body of a white man in a dumpster tonight at a Sun City shopping center. It appeared that the man's body had been there for several days. Officers right now working on this as a homicide investigation. It's too early to tell who the victim is and how he was killed. Also tonight, Phoenix Mayor Paul Johnson says that he is outraged over the case involving Phoenix Fireman Lewis Mueller. As we reported last night, Mueller is the fireman who admitted to molesting a Glendale girl in 1988. We have now learned that he had two previous sex offenses that fire department officials apparently were not aware of. Despite that, a deal between the city manager and fire department allowed Mueller to keep his job and his pension. The money was to be used in counseling and rehabilitation. He served less than one year in jail. Mayor Johnson says he will look into having the pension decision reversed. In another update, a grand jury handed down a five-count indictment against this man. It charges Dwayne Lewis Butterfield with kidnapping and raping an eight-year-old girl and with burglary. Butterfield is the Phoenix man arrested and originally booked under the name Dwayne Okamuro, a move that was made to spare his family embarrassment. Greenpeace members escalated their protest today against a toxic waste plant planned for southwest of Phoenix. This morning, protesters went to the plant site in Mobile. Some of them chained themselves to heavy equipment. Greenpeace says the state has okayed construction of the plant without completing a public hearing process. Well, the group has spent the week outside of the state capitol with a bed chained to a sign in protest of the plant, and tonight is number four for those folks. In Tucson, a five-year-old boy is recovering tonight from a wound he received from a falling bullet. Police say a 45 caliber bullet fired into the air came down a third of a mile away and hit the child in the shoulder as he was playing in the backyard this afternoon. Police have no suspects in custody at this time. Time. Other stories in tonight's Day in Review. A Midwest church criticized for banning an AIDS-infected five-year-old boy from Sunday school. It changed its position today. Chicago's Moody Bible Church officials say they were worried because other children tend to put toys in their mouth. That was their excuse. Now those same officials say the boy can attend. They will leave it to the parents of other children to decide if they want their children in the same Sunday school classroom. Also tonight, there's another glimmer of hope for an American hostage in Lebanon. A Shiite Muslim leader says that a hostage release is certain, but there's no timetable set. The hostage situation is the focus of tonight's City Line poll. Do you think the president should send a special negotiator to help free the hostages? To vote, call City Line at 252-1010 on your touchtone phone, then press 1009. We'll have the results 
later on in Nightcast. You know, we understand that 100 million people nationwide, including thousands of Arizonans, will celebrate in the 20th anniversary of Earth Day on Sunday. But things have really changed since that first Earth Day two decades ago. Mike Mackle is here to look back on Earth Day then and now. That's right, Karen. There's some real skepticism about the 20th Earth Day. Doubt over the huge amount of coverage and whether Sunday's buildup will die out by Monday. His parents named him Mike after his father. Mike was small for his age, but what he lacked in size, he made up for in spirit. He grew to be an articulate student who played violin and read Plato, Thoreau, and Gandhi. A fondness for fashionable tweed suits led friends to nickname him Tweed. Then he met a woman whose struggle changed his life and a nation. What do you really know about Martin Luther King Jr.? Dave Patterson talks about the dream and the dilemma for Arizona, Tuesday on Nightcast. Why is his expertise in such hot demand by Hollywood hotshots? Next Inside Edition. Tonight, following News Center 10 Nightcast. Protect our children. Join us for Channel 10 Summer of Supervision.